Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Comic Sand Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Jumps, and today we're going to move on to issue two of that X-Men series we discussed on a previous episode. Uh, I've got issue number two right here. Pretty cool cover. It's got all of the the members of the team on there. Uh, I've really been liking the artwork of this series, uh, so this is just another, another example of that. Uh, now, nothing to bring you up to speed on because, you know, if, if you missed the last one, you can go ahead and look for the episode titled Krakoan X-Men uh, and get caught up so that you can uh, be in the know for this episode. Uh, so now, um, before I go on, I did just want to point out, you hear that? That's ambient music. Um, I, I actually, uh, did get some, some music from a good buddy of mine goes by Jay Miles. Uh, if you like any of the music that you hear today or on any of the other podcasts, um, you can go ahead and search for him on Instagram, Jay Miles Beats, uh, find you some more, you know, ambient music that you can just, you know, chill with it on in the background or, you know, even dance to pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. Um, so to kick this off, um, the, the issue does start in game world. Uh, if you remember from last time, that's like the Las Vegas casino of space with a bunch of aliens. Um, Cordyceps Jones, he's that weird, eerie, dead astronaut with a plant growing out of him. Uh, he starts off by, you know, mentioning that Earth hasn't been taken down yet, and he looks for any anyone to step up and uh, step up to the plate and, you know, take their shot at it. Um, we do see Kriv Yu of the Numari. I don't know if this is a pre-established character. I've never heard of him before, uh, but he says that he's going to send one of his kind, his alien kind, uh, to Earth to unleash the Annihilation Wave. I just want to stop for a second um, because the Annihilation Wave, this isn't the first time uh, that it's appeared in the comics. It's actually kind of a recurring thing um, and it can be described as an extinction level event. So nothing to, you know, uh, scoff at. And uh, it's, it's pretty much this swarm of giant, it's a giant swarm of giant insects of all different kinds. And, you know, the more that it feeds on, the bigger it gets. And it's uh, pretty disturbing uh, as, a, as a way of describing that. So... Uh, you can imagine this level of a threat, uh, Cordyceps, he is, he's pleased. So, uh, next we, we see, uh, a small town in Kansas. I believe it was Iola, Kansas. Um, we see the alien in a crater that was made by his ship crashing and he drinks this concoction and vomits up the wave. I will not have what he's having. Um... Meanwhile, Jean Grey is coaching Sink on using her telepathic abilities, because if you'll remember, Sink can use any member of the team's abilities, um, and Jean Grey is a telekinetic and a telepath. And so uh, at her level of power, there's a, there's a lot to kind of hone in on that, and you know she, she can pretty much speak into everyone's minds in the world at once. She, she's a really powerful telepath. In the middle of this coaching session, uh, they both sense the deaths that are happening in, uh, you know, in that small town in Kansas. And so Jean Grey calls on the X-Men. They take off in their Thunderbird uh, and they, they, you know, fly out to Iola and they quickly assess and combat the threat. Something that was funny to me because it, it all starts happening so quickly and you know not everyone on the team knows exactly what's going on cyclops does have some uh experience with the wave and so he explains that 
uh, the wave is like the blob from the old McQueen film. And uh, something that I just want to point out because it was funny is that Wolverine says that she hasn't seen it and Jean Grey's response is now you have because she just downloads it into her head. So uh, I just thought that was kind of funny to point out. Um, next, Polaris, uh, if you'll remember, she's Magneto's daughter, so she has the power of magnetism. She pops a uh, magnetized force field bubble uh, over the town, and they're, they're figuring out how to take out the wave when Jean hears a psychic ping from the core of the wave. And so she says, you know, hold up, we, I've got to go check this out, see if there's something we can, we can get out of there. And so uh, what happens is Sink has the idea of uh, him guiding Jean Grey out there by using Polaris's power and creating a small bubble for them. Uh, they like the idea, but they decide that it's better if Sync stays back and takes over the large force field, um, and Polaris will guide Jean Grey into the wave because if things do go south, then Sync is going to need to borrow Sunfire's powers so that they can both do what they can to just burn it all up. Um, so they all agree that's the best idea. Sync takes over the force field and Polaris and Jean make their way into the force field while Wolverine, Cyclops, and Rogue are, you know, taking out the bugs that made it in the force field before it was put up um, or made it into the town before the force field was put up. Uh, and then Sunfire is patrolling the perimeter. He's the last resort pretty much at this point. You've got... Uh, human civilians fighting off the bugs as well that are in the town. Uh, they're using, you know, guns, shotguns, rifles, all of that stuff. Uh, and one of them actually even saved Cyclops from one of the bugs that was coming at him from behind. And I'm when when we're talking about bugs, like they're they're like this big and bigger. Um, so. Uh, Gene and Polaris, they do find the head of the alien that drunk the concoction to, you know, cause all this mayhem. And what they do, because Gene can't read the mind of, you know, read a dead mind, I guess uh, is how I could put it. Uh, so what they do is they combine their abilities, Gene Gray's being telepathy and Polaris being magnetism, to create an MRI for memories, is what Gene says. And she catches a glimpse of Game World. Um, so she's got an idea of what's going on now. Uh, once she does that, she tells Sunfire, hey, go ahead. He burns up everything because he's got the power of a star, uh, the sun. Um, and after that's all said and done, the X-Men and the humans celebrate, which is unheard of. That's not something very common. And, and these are also, you know, they're, they're small town country type people. Uh, the people that are normally portrayed as, you know, the intolerant and hateful. And they, you know, they say they've got to stick around. They insist that they stick around for some Kansas barbecue. Um, that's the end of that big battle. Uh, and immediately in the next scene, there's a, there's, you know, just a quick scene change and we're in kind of an old timey setting, you know, white picket fences and, and whatnot. Uh, we see a wife serving dinner to her husband and son. Um, the husband's face is obscured. We never see it, but we do see a metal helmet. Um, it, you know, kind of set aside, uh, which makes me think that this guy might be the same guy that was at the end of last issue that was experimenting on humans. Because if you can remember, he kind of had, even though we never saw his face, uh, we did see that there was a little bit of a metallicness, um, if you will. And so everything seems fine. You know, it's, it's kind of weird that it's old timey, but you know, the husband seems nice. Uh, but then he tastes the dinner and the first thing he says is, uh, is this a cream sauce? And the wife seems apologetic. She's just like, oh, I, I, you know, I know you don't like that. I'm sorry. And he seems to, you know, wave it off for a moment. But then all of a sudden the son and mothers go face first into their plates. 
um, and are either unconscious or dead. Next thing we know, this looks like a tiger chimp uh, hybrid. Uh, walks on, you know, walks on two feet, um, but it's kind of as furry as a tiger and, and uh, has the, the head of a tiger or some type of feline. I'm, I'm going to guess tiger. Um, his, his name is Bornan, as we find out, and he refers to the husband as Dr. Stasis, which makes me think that maybe he, he just made them unconscious rather than dead because the stasis. Um, Bornan drags the bodies away, and that's kind of the, that's just the end of the issue. What, what comes after is just what they do in X-Men, in the X-Men series a lot of the time is they'll throw in little, there's pages that just have writing on them. Uh, sometimes they're, you know, text conversations, they're, um, letters from one person to another and it's supposed to add to what we're seeing in the story and so this letter or memo actually it's an orcus memo um, that's o-r-c-h-i-s um, and we we were introduced to orcus in the previous x-men series as a new organization of of humans that are against the x-men and so we see in this memo, pretty much the main takeaway is that Dr. Stasis is part of Orcus, and he also knows that Cyclops has died before, um, which makes, again, that makes me think that Dr. Stasis is the guy from the end of issue one because he was questioning how the X-Men are uh, reviving their dead. Um, now, I mean, anything's still possible. We didn't see anything of uh, Kelvin Hang in this issue. That was the guy who wanted to colonize Mars, but then the mutants beat him to it. I don't know. He might be Dr. Stasis. Might not be. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, that's, that's the end of this issue. Uh... Other than that, uh, I, I just wanted to bring some attention to something coming up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Actually, August 11th, so this upcoming Wednesday, is going to be the start of the Marvel's What If series. Um, and I'm very excited for it. Uh, what If is going to be a series based on literally what it sounds like. It's you know, alternate storylines based on different paths that people could have taken in the Marvel Universe. So um, I'm actually wearing a, a shirt right here. It's a it's Funko Pop design, but um, the one of the main storylines is going to be Peggy Carter, which if you've seen the original Captain America movie um, or Endgame, he's the one that she that he's kept. She's Captain America's love interest. Um, and in this What If series, she actually becomes uh, the British super soldier. Um, and Steve Rogers was actually injured and wasn't able to take the super soldier serum. And he becomes what's called the, uh, the Hydra Stomper. And it's a, a big Iron Man-like suit that was created by Howard Stark, Iron Man's father. And so they fight crime together or fight the war together. It's not necessarily crime, but they, they fight in the war together. Uh, there's also uh, a storyline where T'Challa, the Black Panther, gets abducted by the, uh, the Ravagers like Star-Lord was in Gar Guardians of the Galaxy. So he actually, instead of becoming Black Panther, becomes Star-Lord. Uh, another really interesting one, if you remember in the first Iron Man movie, the very first scene where uh, the Humvee convoy with Tony Stark in it gets blown up and that's how he ultimately gets abducted and turns into Iron Man. In this What If series, they actually bring in Killmonger, who was Michael B. Jordan's character in Black Panther, who, if you'll remember, was a Marine. Uh, he mentions that in that movie. They have him save Tony Stark. Uh, so I think that's really interesting. I don't know where they go from there because that means Iron Man never really existed. Uh, so there's a lot of great stuff that can happen with What If. Um, it, it stems from an old comic book series that they've been uh, re revitalizing, revamping um, in recent years, where it's a... Uh, uh, 
character named Uwatu or the Watcher, he talks about different realities where things, you know, things change like uh, like one of the old issues was what if Captain America was never frozen in ice? And they go through a whole issue of, you know, what how that could have played out. Um, one of them is, you know, what if Peter Parker became the Punisher after his Uncle Ben was killed? Uh, that's another interesting issue. And that one's actually more recent. Um, but yeah, so it's it's a series that could honestly just go on for years. There's no there's endless possibilities. So that to me means endless episodes. Uh, other than that, you know, I've already gone over the movies that are coming up uh, later this year. And I'll wait a while before I get into what we're expecting in 2022. Um, Venom is coming up. Really excited for that. There's a second trailer out right now, which really shows a lot of a lot of great action. So I recommend you go take a look at that. Um, that's all for today. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your day.